Elgato just did something that I thought they would never do. They just released an update for Wavelength to give it a completely brand new UI, which is so much better than the old UI, but even better than that, Wavelink is now completely free. And like, actually free. You don't need to buy an Elgato microphone anymore to use this. You can use this with any microphone for free. Wavelink is Elgato's audio mixing software that can be used to split up all your different audio sources and then route them to wherever you want. So for example, let's just say you're listening to music through your headphones, but you don't want that music to go out to your stream. You could do that with Wavelink. Or maybe you have game audio and you have that playing your headphones and your stream, but you just wanna lower your game audio just for yourself and not your viewers. You can do that with Wavelink. Or maybe you're in a Discord call with one of the homies and you wanna send not just one mic, but two mics. And maybe your TTS as well. So when people run TTS redeems in your stream, the person you're talking to can hear the TTS redeems. You can do that in Wavelink. Previously, you needed to own Elgato hardware in order to use this. That is not the case anymore. This is completely open to everyone. And I know anytime some corporation releases something for free, there's always some smart guy. He's like, oh, they're just trying to steal your data. Well, you know, when stuff is free, you are the product. Shut the fuck up, okay? This is, there's no subscription. There's no sign in. You just download the program and you start using it and you don't have to pay for anything ever. I'm honestly shocked that they did this. A lot of you are probably using something like voice meter or steel series sonar. But let's be real, you're just pretending to like those options because they're free. And now that Wavelink is free, you don't have to you don't have to pretend anymore. Okay, we can all agree that they're awful. In my opinion, this is gonna be the go-to audio mixing software that every streamer is gonna wanna have in their stream setup. So I wanna take you through a bit of a tour of how I have it set up in my stream, and then I'll give you a little bit of my thoughts at the end. Quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Boot.dev. A lot of you have been asking me how to get into programming as a beginner. Boot.dev has a lot of courses for beginners or experienced programmers that just want to learn a new language. All their courses are interactive where you actually get to write real code and then submit real code on real working projects. Like they have a project where you can build a working Pokedex and it like walks you through how to do all that. It's super cool. Why is it called boot.dev? Because of this bear wizard guy. His name is Boots. He's kind of like ChatGPT, except he knows the full context of the course that you're working through. So he can sort of help you and nudge you in the right direction if you ever get lost. They released a new thing called Training Grounds where it can generate new programming questions based on areas that it thinks that you're struggling with and you get points and experience for completing them because let's be real you have way too much adhd to learn anything just for the sake of learning things so they have to give you points so you feel like you're you know you got that dopamine hit in your brain if you're interested check out boot.dev in the link down below all the courses are free to read and you only need to pay to unlock all of the interactive stuff and progress tracking. And if you use my code NUTTY, you'll get 20% off an annual membership. So right now, the new Wavelink 3.0 update is only available as a beta, but it is available to everyone. You can download it right now. I'll leave it linked down below. If you have an Elgato microphone or an Elgato Wave XLR, there's a new guided tour for setting up your microphone and adjusting all your settings. But for most of you, you'll only really be interested in this mixes section. This is called a routing table. And this is where you'll be routing all your different audio sources. It's pretty different to the old version of Wavelink. So if you're upset that you spent so much time learning the old version, and now you have to learn something new, try getting over it. Over here on the left is where you'll see all your different audio inputs. An input could be a hardware input like a microphone, an audio interface, your headset, or they could be programs like Spotify, Chrome, all your different games. And along the top is where all your outputs are. By default, you'll have two outputs, your personal mix, 
which is supposed to be for what you hear in your headphones or your speakers, and chat mix, which is gonna be what your viewers hear. These names are completely arbitrary though, so you can literally rename them to whatever you want. I actually renamed my chat mix to stream mix because that's the vernacular that I'm used to hearing in other software. Now, you'll notice when you first set this up, all of your audio is gonna be omega fucked. You won't hear any audio coming out of anything and you're gonna downvote this video because you think I fucked up your audio. It's, you gotta set some stuff up, okay? So let me show you how that's done. First thing you're gonna wanna do is click here where it says create channel. And here you'll see a list of all your microphones and all your programs that you have currently running. So say you're watching a YouTube video in Chrome and you wanna hear back that video in your headphones, just select Chrome and that's gonna create a new Chrome channel for you. Then you need to decide where does that Chrome audio get routed to? In this case, we said we wanna hear it back in our headphones. So under personal mix, click the plus symbol and that will create a new volume slider. If I also wanted my viewers to be able to hear my Chrome audio, then I'd look underneath the stream mix column and click the plus next to Chrome. And then, and then that will create another slider. Now, right now, you probably won't actually hear anything. And that's because we haven't told Wavelink what our headphones actually are. So you see this random unlabeled dropdown box? If you click that and select your headphones, then hover over your personal mix, you're gonna see a ear symbol. If you click that ear symbol, that's gonna tell Wavelink that you wanna actually listen back to your personal mix through your headphones. Alternatively, you can also edit your personal mix and then add an output through here. It's exactly the same thing, but you can actually add more devices. So if you also want to listen to your audio through your speakers, you can add your speakers here and that will send your personal mix through your headphones and your speakers at the same time. Okay, so what about music? Let's just say you want to listen back to Spotify. You do the same thing. You click create channel, select Spotify, then assign Spotify to your personal mix the same way that we did before. But this time, maybe we don't wanna have the music going out to the stream. So in this example, we're not gonna check the stream mix column, we're only gonna check the personal mix column. Now you'll notice there is now an individual slider for every single input output combo that we selected. So let's just say you wanted to adjust your Chrome audio just for your headphones, but not for your viewers. I would look across from the Chrome input and see where it intersects with the personal mix column. And if I adjust that slider, that's only going to affect the Chrome audio for myself, but not for what my viewers hear. If I do want to adjust my streams audio, I'd look down where the stream mix column and the Chrome row meet, and then I would adjust that slider. It's a, you know how to read a table? This isn't fifth grade anymore. You know how tables work. But if I wanted to adjust both my personal mix and my stream mix together, then I would just adjust the volume slider on the actual Chrome input itself. And that will change the volume on both what I hear and what my viewers hear at the same time. Now on the OBS side of things, you need to actually tell OBS to use that stream mix that you have set up in Wavelink. So inside of your OBS settings, make sure that you set your desktop audio to stream mix. It should be named exactly the same as what you named it in Wavelink. So if you renamed it to something else, like horse lover, then it will say horse lover here. You uh, love horses. You should see just a single meter in OBS. This is gonna be the combined audio coming out of Wavelink for your stream mix output. So if you look underneath the stream mix column, every single row that has a volume slider in it 
all of those channels are gonna be combined together into one single meter that you see in OBS. And then you can expand this to all your different games as well. Right now, I've been playing a lot of the finals because I watched the Moist Critical video one time and he said the game's really good. And now my life is over because I don't do anything else but play that game. If I wanted to add the finals to my audio mix, we do the same thing as before. Just add a new channel, select the finals, and then route that to whatever outputs I need. In my case, I want to hear it in both my headphones and my stream, so I'm going to click the plus underneath the personal mix and stream mix columns. And that's my game audio all set up. Now, this is where my first huge annoyance with the new Wavelink update comes in. Right now, any new program that you open up, you need to first assign it to a channel in Wavelink in order to hear it. For example, I've never played League of Legends before. I don't even know what that I, I don't even know what that game is. I have no idea what the goal of the game is at all. But let's just say I wanted to destroy my life and start playing League. If I open that game for the first time, I wouldn't be able to hear anything at all until I first come into Wavelink and then assign League of Legends to a channel. There's no default system channel where audio comes out of. Every single program needs to be assigned in Wavelink if you want to hear it. That is so frustrating. If I have like 30 programs on my computer that all make audio, that means I need to go into Wavelink 30 times and add each and every single one of that programs just to hear audio from them. Now, there is a workaround for this. If you create a new channel, pick any program that you want, then edit that channel. You can remove the program from that channel, then rename that channel to something like system. In your Windows sound mixer settings, set your output to system Elgato virtual audio device and make that your default channel. So that will tell Windows to route all your Windows audio through your system channel. So that way you're not gonna have to keep assigning every new program when you open it up. Only the ones that you want to be on separate channels in Wavelink, those are the only ones you're gonna need to assign. Actually, what I did is I just went ahead and made a bunch of my own channels with custom names. So I made one for my browser, one for my music, one for all of my games. So instead of having individual channels for each of my individual games, I just have one single channel that I call games. And if I edit that, I can actually just add all my games through this one channel. So I'm sort of grouping all of my games together instead of them just having individual rows inside of Wavelink. This is the way the current version of Wavelink works. And honestly, I prefer it this way. I don't like adding programs as channels. I actually think they made it worse than what they had before. This is just a beta, so there is time for Elgato to change their mind before a full release. So if you also prefer how it was before, there is one way to make your voice heard. Bullying. By the way, I should mention you can only have up to eight audio inputs on the left here. That includes both microphones and programs, so all the more reason for you to group up your similar programs into channels rather than having each program be an individual input. You can also have up to five different outputs now. They, in the audio world, they call these things submixes. Previously, you just had your monitor mix and your stream mix. In Wavelink 3, you can have up to five submixes and you can name them whatever you want. Why would you want to have five side mixes? Let's just say you wanted to set up a separate VOD track on Twitch that contains all of your audio minus your music audio. Well, you can just add a new output, rename it to VOD track and check every single audio channel except for your music channel. Or maybe you're on a Discord call and you want to send not just your microphone, but you have two microphones, plus maybe a sound effects channel. You can make a dedicated output channel just for Discord. One really nice thing you could do is you could make a text-to-speech input channel. And so whenever you're in a Discord call, 
all your text-to-speech alerts from your stream also get routed over to Discord. So you don't have that awkward thing where the person that you're talking to can't hear your text-to-speech and then they start talking over you and stuff. It gets really annoying. All you gotta do is create that Discord output inside of Wavelink and then inside of Discord, instead of selecting your microphone as your microphone, you'd select your Discord mix as your microphone. And everything is super neat and clear. If I want to adjust what my stream is hearing, I just look underneath the stream mix column. If I want to adjust what my Discord is hearing, I just need to look under the Discord mix column. Also, if you want to check the audio levels for a particular output, you just hover over the output and click the ear. So if in the middle of your stream, you want to make some adjustments to your stream mix, you can... <coughs> Sorry, I'm sick. <coughs> Where were we? Back to it. Uh, yeah, uh, if you um, are in the middle of your stream and you want to adjust your stream mix, you can temporarily click the ear over stream mix and that will send your stream audio into your headphones. You can make all your adjustments. Then you can swap back to your personal mix. One of the things I would love to see, I would love if each output had a master slider. For example, if I wanted to adjust the overall volume inside of my headphones, right now I need to edit the personal mix just to adjust the slider, which is too many clicks. Just put the slider on the routing table itself. That would be way better. Oh yeah, and also I, I went this whole video, I didn't even mention, Wavelink supports VSTs. So for example, if I wanted to add noise suppression to my microphone, just click on the squiggly thing next to your mic, add whatever VSTs you want, and that will apply system-wide. A lot of you guys add EQ and compression inside of OBS, but the problem is only your viewers can hear that processed audio. If you're talking to someone on Discord, they're still gonna hear your raw, unprocessed audio. So if you add VSTs directly in Wavelink, then people on Discord can hear that better cleaned up audio. At the end of the day, this is still just a software mixer. If you're planning on monitoring your microphone in your headphones, you're probably gonna have a bad time. There's quite a bit of delay and you're gonna get that weird speech jam as you try to speak and then monitor your audio through your headphones. Also, this is mainly for single PC setups. There is no built-in feature for two PC setups like Voice Meter has. Voice Meter has this thing called VBAN where you can send audio tracks over your local network. Wavelink doesn't have anything like that. If you do have a dual PC setup, Elgato did also release a separate tool called Wavecast, but that costs an extra $50 and it's a separate program. But if you want me to make a video on Wavecast, leave a comment, otherwise, I won't make that video and it will be all your fault specifically. Final thing, there is also a new Stream Deck plugin. Like I said, this is just a software digital mixer. You don't have any physical controls. However, if you have a Stream Deck, specifically the Stream Deck Plus, you can control Wavelink through the dials. So if you want physical controls for Wavelink, just buy a Stream Deck Plus and it integrates with Wavelink natively. I do have 5% discount codes in the link down below. So if you if you are interested in getting Stream Deck Plus, then consider using my links and not anyone else's links because I want that revenue for myself because I'm selfish. This is a brand new plugin with a new design. I do think it looks a lot better than the old one. The old one was just like a cringe line with a percentage on it and it looked all boring like. This one kind of mimics the look of the physical dials themselves with a meter whenever that channel has audio feeding through it, which I think looks a lot better. Anyway, go tell your friends and your favorite streamer about me, yeah? Be like, oh my God, Kevin, dude, you need to check out this video, homie. It's like so crazy, dude. Uh, yeah, leave a comment, subscribe, and uh, go watch me on Twitch and do all those other things that uh, will make me become like mega famous on YouTube and stuff. Thanks, see you later.